Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and we're at the Edison Woodworking Show 2024. We're gonna go ahead around and check all the different booths that we have in here and see what cool things we can find. Let's get in there. We're over here with Trey with Mullet. Mullet. Could you tell us a little bit about the product? Yeah, of course. So here at Mullet, we're all about mobile dust collection. Uh, whether you're a small shop or a big shop or you're at a job site, uh, we have your dust collection needs covered. So we've got a boom arm here. We've got a dust cyclone or pre-separation device. Um, those items, you know, are what we sell to kind of keep people and what they're doing, keep the dust down. So uh, the cyclone, we're the first and only cyclone with a one-piece design. So if we take a look over here, the cyclone is already mounted to or molded in with the, uh, the bin or the, uh, the catch, right? So typically with cyclones, you have a opportunity for air leaks here. We've eliminated that opportunity with the molding of the one piece. It is mobile right out the box, and it's a nice rigid connection to the shop vac. So this travels throughout the shop really easily. It goes from tool to tool to tool. It can be tucked away when you don't need it. We capture 99.5% of sawdust here. So the coarse stuff to the fine stuff all circulates throughout the tornado, gets dropped down in the bin, and it sends clean air back to the vac. So even with this small little rigid, it's enough to power and separate out those big and small chunks in the mullet. Uh, the boom arm here, we launched late last year, comes in uh, several different variations, but the point of this is it's your third hand, right? So if you need to articulate this out, it's got 360 degrees of rotation. So you loosen it up, articulate it to where you need it, lock it back down, and point this right to where you need it for dust collection, say up on a tabletop or at a lathe station, uh, many, many different applications. We could also hook into the bigger dedicated systems here if you want to come around. Using PVC fittings, we went down to inch and a half. All our system, whether it's via the cyclone or the boom arm, is kind of that inch and a half PVC base. But again, all these arms articulate 360 degrees. It's just really nice to be able to point this right to where you need it for the dust collection. And I know you said you're not selling it yet, but I have to show it on the video. Yeah. I noticed that there is a T-Track option yes. that you're playing with, which I'm super interested in there. Right, so that same bench top setup we were looking at over there with the sanding hose drop, um, you could use that here and just slide this all the way up and down a workbench, uh, having that kind of mobility and that dust collection right to where you need it. Okay. All right, great product. Thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, everybody, we're over here at Saw Stop booth with Pat, and I was just talking with Pat about how I get some comments sometimes from viewers saying that Saw Stop makes you lazy with your safety practices because you have that safety implement in place. So I wanted to hear what Pat had to say about that. Well, Saw Stop is not an excuse to disregard standard safety practices in the shop. Accidents happen, they happen to people that know what they're doing, they happen to novices, they happen to the most experienced woodworkers that we know. Um, it is not an excuse to disregard safety, uh, standard safety practices. Let me ask you this question. If you had a car uh, with an airbag, would you drive any less cautiously than a car without an airbag? And I think the answer to that is no. Saw stop is the same thing. You know, our, our safety feature does not make you a safer woodworker, it makes you less likely to sustain a serious injury, and that's what we do, we prevent serious injuries. You don't want to disregard the, uh, the standard safety protocols that are, have been in place for decades in, in, in shops. It's just a foolish uh, concept. Right. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, I think that this, any safety implement that can be added in to any one of the dangerous tools in the shop it's not really going to change the way I work, but it's going to just give me that extra insurance in case the unforeseen happens. Because you can never know when that little mess up's going to happen, when there's an unexpected void or not inside the wood that causes something to happen that we didn't expect, where our wood goes forward or we bind up. Um, we had a viewer that actually commented as well that they were using a push stick. It got caught in the blade and it pulled his fingers into the blade and caused him to sustain serious damage to two of his fingers. So, you know, anything that's gonna help with that, I think is obviously a win. Absolutely. Every board has a potential surprise. We hope it's beautiful grain. 
but it can be a kickback. And kickbacks happen, and they usually end up uh, with you know somebody getting hurt somehow or another. So yeah. All right. Continue to use your your normal safety procedures when using any piece of equipment in any shop. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. This is over at the Saw Stop booth. So I didn't let Saw Stop do the traditional salesy spiel that they might do. Um, I wanted to ask them the question that I've gotten comments about from certain people in the channel. Uh, saying that they feel that saw stop makes you lazy about safety. And if you were to follow your traditional safety protocols with these tools, you're not going to get hurt. Um, now, to that, personally, I would also say, I focus a lot on safety on this channel because I need to help show people the right way to do things to keep them safe. I care about my viewers. I don't want you to get hurt, right? Um, so I'm somebody really, really focused on it, and yet, I've still had things happen to me in the shop. So my personal opinion is any safety feature that you can add to any tool out here in the shop, because all tools are to some degree inherently dangerous, it's not a bad thing. So uh, just my opinion, but uh, I totally agree with what the rep from Saw Stop said. So we're here over at NJ Wood Turners with Keith. Uh, this is a great organization. They are selling their wooden tops that they're making here for donations to the Children's Specialized Hospital, a local hospital here in New Jersey. How's it going, Keith? Going well, going well. So tell me about the organization. Well, we, uh, we've been doing this for Oh, 20 or 30 years, almost 20, 30 years. Okay. And we, uh, we're all about wood turning. For, yep. for people who've never done it before, you can come uh, have free, come to a couple of free meetings. Because uh -huh. we only charge like $30 a year. Right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Great. And so these are some of the uh, tops that some people have been making here today that people can buy for $5. Very yes. cool. So, Keith, I've been interested in getting into turning. So what do you think is a good beginner lathe to start off with with somebody who wants to get into the, uh, the well, technique? Well, as, as you can see, we're using Nova lathes. We found that uh, the ones from Nova are excellent. You know, they're, they're, they're good value for the, for the money. But, again, Nova is just one of the companies. We could mention two or three other companies, but start out, I would get the Nova. That's what oh, we're using good. right here. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Keith. Awesome, awesome thing you guys are doing here. Yep, thank Have you. Have a great show. Okay, thanks. Keith also has some pens that they've turned here that they're going to be putting out for sale. Really, really nice looking. So I'm over at the Bow Products booth. There's nobody here right now, but I wanted to point out this push stick. I have not seen this product before. And the fact that it uses a really hard foam in the front, I totally see how using this as your push stick, you're amply far away from the product. But if the blade were to impact into on this foam, it's not gonna create an explosive reaction like if you were using one of the cheapo plastic push sticks. So that is a very cool product to take a look at. Hey guys, my name is Jacob Rhodes with True Track, and what I've got here at the Woodworking Show this year is our track saw system. It is a universal track saw system, so you can take any style of standard circular saw, whether it's corded, cordless, left bladed, worm drive, pick your favorite color. We've got an adapter plate that rides on top of our track, and so once that's on there, the track is going to control where your saw goes. The biggest difference between a track saw and an edge guide is where your saw actually rides. With an edge guide, you got to know what your offset measurement is out to your blade. You got to get to the right side of your blade. And then you have to maintain the same pressure all the way down through your cut. If you let up, you take a step, your cord gets caught, you end up with a bump, a burn mark, or a burr. With the track, you're on top of it, and the track is what's actually going to control where your saw goes. Another product that True Track has is their router gantry system. It is very cool. They have a manual version that you can just slide down, but they also have a mechanized version that's going to uh, move the router back and forth across the table in a pattern, which is very neat. So we're over here with Shaper, their origin product. I'm here with Don. Don, would you be able to show us a couple things with the product? Sure. Uh, basically, um, a lot of people don't understand that these dots here are basically just for the location so that the, the router itself knows where it is. It doesn't really have to do anything with its design. This is just for location. When I hit this screen, right here, right now, 
that's the camera that's at, that's actually looking at this. And everything we're seeing here, that's just in the memory of the computer. That camera is looking out here. It knows what size these are supposed to be. And the ones back here look slightly smaller to it. So it can do the math and figure out where that where this is and where it's going to be positioned out here where you're actually cutting. The pattern and everything that you're going to cut, that's still in here. All you're doing is you're taking, um, let's see, go to cancel, I'll go to copy. So I got this pattern right here that I just copied. It's just a half inch hole. When I place that, all these dots are doing is making sure that I cut that hole in exactly the same place in where I just placed it. And it's doing, that's what these dots do is just tell it where I just placed that. And that's kind of how the machine works. And you can even see as you're moving it around right now, yeah. he already has this right here, but as we move it back, as he was saying, it knows that it's still there inside the computer. Yeah, Very cool. and I just copied that, so if I had multiple holes to do, I would just tap into this. Um, I'll just go like quarter inch deep. Uh, I don't have to be positioned exactly over the hole itself. I, see, I'm slightly off center, so I'm not exactly, I can be sloppy as far as that goes. And I'm just holding the router still and letting it do its own work. And it keeps descending until it gets to the right depth. So you have limited motion in what you're doing. The machine is actually doing the finer detailed motion. Yeah. You'll just do the larger motions to get it to where it needs to be. I, it has about a half inch of travel. So I just get it close to where it needs to be. And I let the machine itself do what it does best. Mm -hmm. um, it will do detailed work in like the dragon and this stuff that's going back and forth and back and forth. It'll do it faster than I can drag that thing around. <laughs> Um, when I hold down on the green button, the machine will actually cut as far as it can inside the, the, that round circle that's, that's on there. And obviously this is phenomenal for small shops that can't fit oh. a large, full-size CNC um, bed. Small shops, uh, flooring guys, I mean you can't do an inlay until the floor is down, and once the floor is down you can't take it to a CNC, you know. So uh, I've got flooring guys that have been doing this for inlays and also repairs. So you've got to take a board out. You can make a rectangle right on board on the machine, right on at the job site, position it so you can just take out the center of the meat, and then you just tie out, you know, like you would do it. But there's no dust. It's precision. You can't really make a mess of it. There's no time where you're actually plunging the saw in and you've got to kick back across your floor. Um, so they're finding all kinds of different ways to use this. Okay, awesome. Well, yeah. there's a giant line of everybody wanting to check out Shaper, so I'm gonna say thanks, Don, I appreciate it. You got it. So that was my time at the Woodworking Show in Edison, New Jersey, 2024. Uh, they have 11 locations around the country, so check it out in, their dis in my description. I'll post the link to their website. It's really fun, it's 14 bucks to go. I wasn't able to show you a ton of it because I asked permission before I filmed somebody. Um, and there are lots of camera shy people out there and obviously there's things I can't show you like the seminars and things like that. Those are only for paid uh, people that are coming into the show. Uh, at these shows there are a ton of vendors. So there were companies that were kind of like a tool market. So a uh, couple hundred different tools that you could pick from. They weren't from one specific company. Uh, there are lumber vendors there that are selling exotic hardwoods at pretty good prices, which is fun. Uh, there were even people who had booths with uh, antique hand tools that you could purchase, and those were very popular booths. Over at the seminars, there were lots of different things where you actually got hands-on experience with a professional that was teaching you how to use something. Uh, there was CNC work, lathes, um, all sorts of stuff. So. Uh, definitely something to check out. Check out their website. There were tons of other companies too that I couldn't show because you know they're a little camera shy, and that's okay. Uh, so I hope you did get some good content from what I was able to show. If you did, I hope you like and subscribe because that's what helps me grow the channel. And as always, stay safe in the shop. I'll see you in the next one.